Hello everyone and welcome to the Retro Channel. Now something came in the mail which I'm pretty excited about and that is the Ben Venn Game Gear screen. So this is a recent release from Ben Venn and uh, we're going to install it in a Game Gear of course. Now the difference between this screen and a lot of the other replacement screens on the market is that this uses an IPS panel whereas the other screens use a TFT panel. So what I'm going to do is get this installed in this Game Gear and when, then we'll compare it to a McWill screen and for good measure an original screen and see how it compares. But I'm pretty excited. I think this is going to look mint. So let's get it installed. All right, so this is the Game Gear we're going to be working with today. You can see that I've already removed the screen lens because it was old and scratched up. So we'll put a fresh one on there afterwards. But um, this one does sort of work. The actual screen itself has issues. So they also crap out after a while sometimes and the actual driver chips on the screen stop working. But I can tell that it's still responsive to all the buttons, so that's a good sign that the actual CPU and RAM and everything is working correctly. So I think once we put the new screen in there, uh, it should be good to go. So first things first um, is to take all the screws out, which I've already done on this one. And just remove all these many thousands of batteries. Uh, so all the screws are out. You will need a game bit 4.5 driver for that particular screw. Um, and what I'm going to do even right now before I forget is cover up the hole for that screw because we won't be putting a screw back in there. With all of these replacement LCD screens, um, pretty much that screw always gets covered up and the actual post inside needs to be cut out in order to fit this new screen in there. So that's one thing that's just going to have to happen. So I just cover that up just so I don't forget and try and push a screw in there and damage the new screen. Um, the other thing to note, of course, you will want to recap your game gear. And that means all the caps on the power PCB, the soundboard, and uh, the main board itself. Obviously, you don't have to worry about any ceramic. Are these even ceramic? Yeah, I don't know what they are, it doesn't matter. Um, yeah, all the electrolytic caps need to be replaced. Um, even if you're not putting a new screen in, I would replace these electrolytics because they will leak. It is guaranteed in the game gears. Now, I'm using a VA0 version motherboard. So it's got the twin ASIC chips. Um, you can also use this or well, install this mod on the VA1 version, which has got the single ASIC, but not the VA4. And you'll know it's a VA4 because it's got VA4 written up the side. And yeah, there's, there's really only two main chips on the back. The VA4 boards, I don't think there is a replacement screen option for these. So um, yeah, if you've got one of these, you're pretty much stuck with it. I mean, I got this in a job lot along with a bunch of other game gears and I haven't even bothered changing out the caps because it's, it's not really much to do with this thing. So, oh well. So yes, VA0 or VA1 will work with this mod. And I believe Mr. Lurch already did a install video because he got the prototype from Ben Venn. Um, and he's done an install video, so that's sort of the official guide to installing the Ben Venn screen. Um, I'm going to do something a little bit different, and I actually want to have all the wiring on the back side of the board. Usually with all these screen mods, a lot of the wiring runs to these front pins on the old LCD connector but uh, I've traced a few things out and got a little plan to wire everything up only on the rear side. I just want to do that just so I can actually, if I ever need to go back in here, I can easily see all the wiring. And I think it looks a little bit neater. Well, hopefully it'll look a little bit neater. And I like to set myself a challenge. So um, 
we're going to try that. But yeah, if you did end up getting one of these Benven screens, um, or if you're planning on ordering one, I think probably getting quick because I'm pretty sure uh, after this first batch, it's going to be a while before he releases any more. And uh, I think there's a version two, which is going to be a bit more expensive, but it's also going to include some new features. This version one um, doesn't have options for like VGA out like a lot of the other mod screens do. Um, and I think version two is going to be an even higher resolution screen. So there'll be more scaling options, um, better integer scaling, that kind of thing. So version two sounds cool, but because of the chip shortage, who knows when that's actually going to come out. I mean, it took Ben quite a while to get the first version out, um, but we appreciate that it's here. So let's get started and start modding. First things first, we want to get rid of the old screen. This is the same for pretty much any of these mods. And of course, we want to chop out that connector and not fling buttons across the room. Whoops. Let's just get rid of that post before I forget. doesn't have to be perfect just as long as it's not sticking out. Put that aside and we'll put this aside, bring this in. Now, because I'm not actually planning on using any of these pads, I'm not worried if I accidentally lift one. Normally you'd want to run through with the soldering iron and just gently ease these up. I'm not going to bother, I'm just going to start tearing. Obviously, I'll be somewhat gentle about it. Sort of. I've actually left a lot of the pads from the screen on the board, but like I said, I don't plan on actually soldering to this side, so it doesn't matter. Uh, we've got to get this old um, cold cathode fluoro out of here. It's just got two solder joints. One there, one over here somewhere. You could also cut it out, but it's easy enough to desolder. And we've got to get the old fuses out. Like I said, this is the same for all of the mods as far as I'm aware. Um, so there's the McWill version. Uh, I think Retro 6 brought out, brought out a version and also Retro Kai. Um, and yeah, they all use, I believe, a TFT LCD. So they're all going to look more or less the same. Uh, and because the McWill, uh, sorry, got McWill on the brain, because the Ben Venn screen uses an IPS uh, panel, it should hopefully look quite different from the rest. Um, I haven't actually tried out the Retro 6 or the Retro Kai screens. I believe they are easier to install because uh, I think the Retro 6 has like a flat, flat flex ribbon cable that sort of loops around some of the components. And the Retro Kai sort of has a board that makes it a bit easier to solder to these pads here. But like I said, I'm not actually gonna be even using them, hopefully unless I've made a colossal F up, which is quite possible for me. Uh, the only thing I will need to do, even though there doesn't seem to be much there, is just make sure there's no solder left over from where the fuses were, because um, that part of the board needs to be completely flat. And they actually came out quite easily on this one, so. Yeah, that's it for the first part. Now moving along, the other component that needs to come out is this coil here. Once again, that's quite easy. I'm just gonna heat up its legs and work it out by gently tilting it back and forth, just because I don't really wanna break out the desoldering gun just to remove these 
few components. That's more about me being lazy than anything else. And uh, I believe that is it. Uh, yeah, with the McWill mod, there's all sorts of other components that you have to pull out, which, I mean, you're probably not gonna replace the screen again, but I don't like removing hundreds of components. If, if something brand new and shiny comes along and you wanna use that instead, um, chances are you're gonna need some of those components back. So ideally, removing as few components as possible is, is preferred. So I think from seeing the install video, These pads all went on this side of the board, which is a little counterintuitive when you're looking at it because all the text is upside down. Um, but I assume that's the way it goes in. Um, yeah, always good to have a this way up somewhere on the board, especially if you got your text one way and yeah, as far as I know, it actually gets installed up this way. Probably should take that cover off. Ah! You <laughs> bastard. Right, that's all. Let's put some screws in that. All right, so I do appreciate that it comes with a bracket. There is a little bit of play to it. I guess that's so you can align it correctly once it's inside the case, but I mean, surely the, all the cases and the boards are the same. Otherwise the original screens would need to be aligned as well. So, I mean, surely you can get a bracket that fits the screen just right and positions it on the main board in the right spot. Um, I guess it's nice to be able to adjust it, but I mean, is it really necessary if you can already design something that that fits that screen nice and snug and doesn't leave any room for error? I don't know. I didn't design this, just my opinion there. Let's move on and get to soldering some wires. Right, here's my little sheet that I drew up, so Hopefully I haven't made a massive blunder. Hit some hook up wire. Hook us up. All right. Left hand side of R31. So the first spot we're going to is R31. Now, like I said, this is not the part of the official install guide. This is how I'm doing it because just because. Now you'll see a lot of these install guides mention uh, getting the clock signal from FB1, which I guess was a spot for a ferrite bead, but none of the boards seem to have it installed. But I did have a board that doesn't even have FB1 on it. Uh, and in that case, uh, you can tap between these two resistors. So this junction in the middle here if you don't have the FB1 on your board. I was wrong about this one. The screen itself doesn't actually cover up the holes where the fuses were. So I guess I didn't need to make sure they were free from solder, but yeah, on the other boards, the actual, the PCB covers up most of these holes, or at least on the, the McWill version that I've got. Right, we are back and I've put the screen in a different board. 
Uh, I spent a few hours, probably far too many, trying to troubleshoot why the colors were wrong on this board with the Ben Venn screen. And I've put it down to something wrong on this board, but I can't tell what it is. Um, yeah, I even moved the, the cables to the recommended spots on the LCD connector, everything tested for shorts and still got the exact same color issue. So there's definitely something wrong with this board. And luckily enough, I had another twin ASIC board. Uh, this is one of the ones that I mentioned before that doesn't have a spot for the ferrite bead. Um, so you need to solder the clock signal in between those two resistors next to the crystal. Um, but this one actually works. So one other little issue as I'm trying to put it back together is to do with this bracket. Now it is a 3D printed bracket. Um, and I do prefer it over the McWheel screen, which you actually have to sort of solder into the main board and try and line it up and then solder it down. Not a big fan of that. But unfortunately, this bracket is just a little bit out of shape. And once I pull it out, if I can find my screwdriver, I'll be able to demonstrate that. So the issue with the bracket is that it doesn't perfectly line up with the little mounting posts inside the Game Gear front panel. Um, now, when it's like this, you can just pop it and it'll slightly bend into shape. But when it's attached to the actual board, it doesn't have that kind of flexibility. So you end up with it either sitting up on this corner or if you manage to get that in it sits up on the other corner so I will have to take a little bit out of one of these corners just to make it sit flush and I think my best bet is to go with this top corner Think we can work with that, but yeah, it didn't leave much left. Maybe I should have taken it off the other corner. Anyway, let's try and get it in and hope that it sits properly. Yes, I think it's in. Awesome. Haven't snagged anything. And yeah, I don't have to worry about cables going around to the front because everything is wired on the back. I like that. So the positive things versus the McWill mod. Um, obviously, the removal of less components is a definite bonus. Um, as so many mods get created, who knows when you're going to want to upgrade to a different mod. And you might need to have some of those components installed. The McWill mod, there's all kinds of stuff that had to be removed up here. And I think there's a couple of resistors somewhere else as well. Obviously the coil, but that seems to be common to every mod. So not a big deal, I guess. Also with the McWill and the other mods, uh, the brightness control is seems to be a little bit better thought out on Ben Venn's screen. So he's tapping brightness from a different place on the board. It's, I think it's pin eight of the LCD connector. Obviously I tapped it somewhere else uh, off this capacitor here, but with all the other variants, I think they directly wire it into the, the original contrast wheel, which requires, in this case, it required two wires. This is actually an older version of the Ben Venn screen, uh, but it is possible to do a little mod to get that, um, contrast wheel to act as a brightness control. I'll put a link down below in the description um, to that mod in case you want to do it to your older Ben Venn screen. I mean, older McWheel screen. I think this is version two point something. Uh, I think the latest version threes 
um, do actually have the brightness control enabled. But yeah, so I do like that there's less components to remove and it does come with the bracket, even though it wasn't perfect, but I'd rather a bracket over soldering it onto the board. Apart from that, I mean, wiring is pretty similar. Obviously I went a little bit different with the wiring on this one, but that's just because I wanted to, to see if it could be done and it can. Let's check out the actual differences in the screens, especially with some gameplay. So I'll close these both back up and we'll check it out. I'll put a nice fresh glass lens. I'll link these down below if anyone's interested as well. Um, they were pretty cheap from AliExpress and they do have a slight curve around the edges, which some of the other ones don't. And you end up feeling a, like a sharp edge around the actual screen. These ones have a bit of a curve. They're not exactly like the original. I think some of the actual printing looks a little bit different, but they do come up very nice. So all of these three have a nice glass screen. All right, so here's our three screens. This is the McWheel. This is the original. And up the top here is the Ben vent. You can see straight away that the original looks terrible and that's just how the original screens were on these. Um, as soon as you move them off angle, they're pretty much impossible to see. Whereas a modern replacement, you can move it off angle and yeah, still be able to see the screen. But there is better off angle viewing with the Ben Venn and we'll have a look at that in a second. I just wanted to demonstrate what the original screen does compared to a modern replacement. Now, one thing that does stand out with the original versus a modern screen is the original is quite blurry. I mean, and especially blurry with motion. The new screens are very sharp, but there is one downside to that and it's pretty minor really. If you look at the shadows in the trees around the leaves, they look like shadows and that's because it's, this game was obviously designed with that blur in mind and those less sharp pixels. If you look on a modern screen, the actual leaves on the trees, you can actually make out the pixels that would like, look like a shadow in a blurrier screen, but actually just look like alternating pixels on a modern screen. Same thing goes with, you know, LCDs versus CRTs and different video output options. That's just how it is. A lot of these were designed with that blurriness in mind, but if you prefer those sharp pixel looks, then by all means go for it. There's no right or wrong way. Apart from that, like I said, the original screen is just rubbish. So that's all I had it out for. Let's compare the modern replacements. So at this point, they both look very similar. There is not much difference between them, this one has a bit bolder colors to my eye. This one's a little bit more lighter on the blue, at least on Sonic. Let's have a look at the actual gameplay. So yeah, this one definitely looks better from where I'm sitting. And that makes me realize that this is actually the Ben Venn screen because the off angle view is far better than the McWill. See how the colors on this one are almost inverted and it gets worse the further off angle you get. So around 20 degrees, maybe 30 degrees is good. But after that, it just gets worse and worse. The Ben Venn IPS screen just looks pretty much perfect regardless of the viewing angle. So definite big plus for this. You can see that they both start up in the same scaling mode. Now this is a, like a, to fill the screen, it's not an integer scale, so it's not pixel perfect. Um, let's swap through the modes and see how they differ. So the first mode is uh, double wide scale. So it is an integer scale horizontally, but not vertically. This works well for most games. You can really get away with it most of the time and it's especially good for games like Sonic here because 
you don't get the horizontal shimmering um, as you move left and right across the screen. Um, both of them also have a scan light option. The Ben Venn screen, you simply hold start and push either up or down to turn on or off the scan lines. The McWill, you just sort of cycle through them. So that's scan lines. And then the next setting is double horizontal, double vertical. So it's scaled two times in both directions. And I think the battery just died on that one. That's a bit annoying. One sec. All right, so there's our double scale. So it's double horizontal, double vertical. Integer scaling, this looks quite sharp and obviously it's gonna remove any shimmer, but it is gonna cut off parts of the screen. Now, one of the big bonuses with the Ben Venn version is you can actually shift the vertical um, section of the screen. So you can either shift it up or down. This is really good for games that have either useless information up the top or bottom of the screen because you can pretty much still have the benefit of double scaling in both directions and just cut off any unnecessary information. The McWill mod doesn't do that. What can you do? Um, third scaling mode is basically the same on both. Um, you'll notice that this one does not have a border around it, whereas this one has a blue border. That could just be a difference in the ROM version that I'm using. This has got an original cart. This has got an EverDrive running the Game Gear Sonic ROM. So that's interesting, sort of, maybe, not really. And then it's back to um, full screen, non-integer. One other thing to note, if we turn the volume, just pause that, turn the volume all the way up. Both of them are about the same. There's a slight buzz, but I think that's just Game Gears. As I turn this one down though, so turning the screen brightness down on the McWill screen causes a sort of weird high pitch noise that sort of changes with the brightness. On the other hand, the Ben Venn screen, if we do the same, there's no high pitch noise. The buzz of the audio may have increased slightly, but keep in mind, we've got both of these at full volume, which is quite loud. You'd probably normally be playing at something, something around there. And in that case, you definitely can't hear any buzz from either screen. But just something to note that... Oh, I know that you can still definitely hear a buzz from the McWill screen, even at fairly low volume. So there is that high pitch noise. So yeah, definitely some better filtering going on with the Ben Venn screen. Let's just quickly have a look at master system scaling. So we'll start with the Ben Venn because it's the simplest one and it's already got the EverDrive in it because we're gonna need that to fire up the master system test suite, which is similar to the 240p test suite, uh, but I think it's just a, a homebrew project that's been forked from that. So I'll link that down below for anyone interested. And here it is here. So in master system mode, there's no option on the Ben Venn screen to actually change the scaling that I'm aware of. It does obviously detect that it's uh, running in master system mode because it's scaling at one to one at the moment. So there is a bit of a black border around the, around the entire screen, but um, nothing too major there. Um, everything looks really solid in these test patterns. Um, yeah pixel sharp, everything's basically perfect. And there's not really much I can fault it on. And like I said, viewing angles, oops, and I just went back out of that. Viewing angles, pretty much perfect. Like those colors basically remain solid the whole way through from zero to 90 degrees. So yeah. Linearity is an odd one. I think the master system must have non-square pixels because you can see that these circles are stretched vertically slightly. 
that's a bit strange. Um, and the, unfortunately, this is the only, there isn't any other scaling option, so you, you're stuck with that. But as I said before, everything else is pixel perfect, so it's a bit odd. The, I'm not 100% sure, but I, I assume that the master system doesn't have square pixels, and that's what messes up this test. In saying that, I couldn't tell the difference without looking at that linearity pattern, but maybe you'd be able to tell if you're playing Sonic and you went through one of the loops, if you could see the entire loop on the screen, it may look like an oval. As I said, there's no other scaling options with the Ben Ven in master system mode. Now for the McWill, there is different scaling options. So it starts up stretched horizontally and everything looks pretty normal until you get to the things like the color bleed pattern and the grid pattern. The pixels are not consistent. You get sort of fat and skinny ones all the way through the screen and same with the stripes and checkerboard pattern. So because it's not scaling one to one, um, some pixels are gonna get stretched, others are gonna stay like a single pixel. Um, and here's our viewing angle test. So you can see that it changes quite a bit over the whole viewing angle. And that's just what you get with a TFT screen versus an IPS screen. Linearity. So here it looks like a nice round circle. Now remember that it's actually stretching the image horizontally. So that's what makes me think that the master system probably has rectangular pixels to begin with and not square ones that these panels happen to have and pretty much every panel these days is gonna have. We can at least change the scaling mode and also add scan lines. So we can change it to one to one, which makes it, makes it stretched vertically, um, but it does sharpen up all these other tests. So they're all pixel perfect again. So there's a bit of a trade off there. Personally, yeah, I'd rather have the pixel perfect look um, and lose a little bit of linearity. Um, but as I said, hopefully there'll be a new version of this coming out eventually that'll use a higher resolution screen and we'll have some better scaling options. So for me, the Ben Venn screen is definitely my new go-to. I think it's got the right balance of options versus performance and price. And um, yeah, I do prefer it over the McWill screen for sure. And um, well, anything beats the original screen. Speaking of the price, this was under a hundred Australian ship to me. I think the McWill screen cost just under 200. And speaking of which, I did even get one of the AliExpress McWill specials. Do not buy these. There's no instructions. Um, there's nothing to actually hold this LCD in. You've got to figure that out for yourself along with everything else. Um, it is pretty much a copy of the McWill. And that presents an issue because if it wasn't for McWill and Ben Venn creating screens for these systems, um, not only would these copies not exist, uh, but if everyone just went out and bought the copies, these guys probably wouldn't bother creating the originals just to have their product basically ripped off. So yeah, really the only reason I bought this was just to see what it was like, and it is terrible. And I only bought it after I bought the Ben Venn and the McWill screens just out of curiosity really. So yeah, don't support this, support the people that actually came up with some of these ideas and put a lot of time and effort into it. Things I'd like to see in future versions, uh, obviously I've gone on and on about that bracket. Um, I think one of the other screens might be the Retro 6 or something. They look like they have a molded bracket rather than a 3D printed one. I mean, 3D prints are okay. I mean, it's not like you can see it, but you do want a better tolerance there, I think. That'd just be nice. Um, the other thing I'd really like to see in basically any of these screens is maybe future updates. So maybe just a, a JTAG or even a simple USB port stuck on there somewhere that could enable, you know, more features. I'm not a designer of these kind of things, so I don't know how hard or simple that is or how much it would cost to implement, but 
say there were new scaling modes that could be done, it'd be nice to be able to give that to people without going out and purchasing yet another Game Gear screen. Um, that being said, I'll definitely buy the version 2 of the Benvent just to check it out. Apart from that, there's not much else to say. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, please do me a favor, share it around. Uh, that'll really help out the channel. Obviously, subscribe if you haven't. And you can also find me on Patreon. Uh, there's early access videos, ad-free, all that kind of thing and more. Uh, but until next time, thanks for watching the Retro Channel. See ya. It's been a long day. I'm ready. Oh, you bastard.